Good afternoon. You are watching the Policy Times Unleashing India Global Web Summit series. Uh, Policy Times is uh, one of uh, a unique initiative in terms of uh, a media come strategic think tank, which has just one objective. We want to make India one of the most prosperous countries of the world and a world and the world a peaceful uh, you know, inhabitant. Now, to talk about this, Policy Times has been reaching out to different stakeholders promoting journalism for policy and progress. We realize that education, uh, sustainable development, infrastructure, healthcare, and many other sectors are the core, and foreign policy uh, being the top are the core areas which needs excessive and important discussion where intellectual people who are really veteran, intellectual, and working on this should be brought in, in a platform like uh, this and to have their views and understanding. To talk on foreign policy, India being one of the leading powers in the global power circle uh, needs to establish close relations with different nations of different countries. As India's most respected nation, it has very positive mm -hmm. and relations. Among them, Middle East is one of the most important regions uh, in the world that India has always maintained a very healthy, nice socio-economic uh, and political relationship. Middle East, I mean, almost two thirds of India's oil import is dependent on the Middle East. But not only that, the largest, I think, Indians who reside uh, abroad is also the Middle East. And the maximum remittances that we earn is also from this uh, beautiful and pious land. But uh, this story doesn't end here. The story is also, while Middle East being a big and large region, also, there are certain specific and special partners in this, and United Arab Emirates being certainly top in the list, where our current leadership under the Luke West policy has extended and reiterated and furthered the relationship with the United Arab Emirates and Oman and many other countries. So today we have eminent experts three experts actually, who have deep understanding and who have spent their uh, almost entire life in terms of understanding this region and also bridging relation between India and Middle East. So this chairman of this show, uh, Dr. P. Shekhar, also chairman of Unleash India and Global Smart Cities panel, author, publisher, mm -hmm. also a policy influencer, has been working pro to promote uh, nation building and national growth across uh, the world. And, Unleashing the Global Web Summit Series is also one of such series where we have been very successful to bring the real experts of the country. So I want to request Dr. Shekhar to kindly take over the session and all our viewers keep watching. Thanks, Akram. Uh, technically, uh, this is the 77th session. We started in May last week and without a break, every week, twice this has been going on. And very fortunately, keeping in view today's thing, in the last four weeks, we had one with Europe, and we had another with Singapore. We had one with Mongolia, and lo and behold, we have India's biggest partner, Middle East, today coming. Now, Middle East means there is a lot of things to be said, a lot of things to be uh, understood, and there is a historical binding, there is cultural binding, there is a manpower binding, and there has been a huge give and take between the two uh, entities of the world. And this has been a very big and uh, enterprising uh, <clears throat> place. Uh, so today, what I will do, I will just run through a small presentation. And then I will give, in this I will do it in uh, just three, four minutes only. This is just to give you a flare of what we are expecting today. Because the main speakers have got a lot of things to tell. They are the experts in this field and would like <clears throat> Yeah. So today's topic is enhancing the business, cultural expansion, and for secure techno-economic growth between the for national reincarnation. And when we are saying nation, we are talking of both nations. We are not talking only of India. Okay. Nation is broad in terms of uh, what we say. Now, vision behind this whole series is how to make every place a super smart city, and we are talking right from village level. And we are not dis the discriminating between urban and rural. And this is from a broad perspective. Again, I will not go into too much of detail. This is very, very interesting. 
uh, because Middle East consists of various countries, which also is listed uh, here. And today we are going to talk more specifically of uh, you know, UAE and still more specifically of Abu Dhabi. Because the people who are there, they are all doing extremely great work through uh, Abu Dhabi place in UAE. And they are global people starting from UAE. So UAE is a very uh, big country in its own uh, entity, 10 million people. 10 million people in those areas compared to India, it may be small, but they are pretty large. And in this Abu Dhabi itself is uh, one of the power centers and one of the most prosperous part of um, uh, not only uh, UAE, but of whole uh, Middle East. And India, as you know, is a very, very different uh, uh, country. You know, India is almost 206 countries put together. India has got so many uh, things which are very much different from what we call as a conventional uh, other countries. Uh, it has got uh, 1.4 billion people, whereas very 10 million and 1.4 billion people. So we got our own problems in terms of diversity. We got the most number of religions, language, culture, and you name it, and we have it in abundance. And we also have an abundance because India almost increases the rate of 20 million people every year. And that means that it's a huge problem if it's not taken care of properly. And if it's taken care of very well, it becomes a prosperity. They become the market for the whole world. Because the whole world looks at some days just not a prosperous market. India is getting into prosperity thanks to people like Zulkar, who are all bringing India ethos to the whole world, goodwill to the whole world. They are also trying to see that their own you know, innovativeness comes to their own benefit and to the place where they are deciding. One thing very good about Indians are, wherever Indians go, first is that a place where they go, where they work for, where whose prosperity they see. Then second is our own country, which they also do food justice. And third is themselves. They put themselves after all these things. So that is something which is uh, true of the Zulkar also. And uh, he has done an immense job which I'll come in another few minutes time. Now, this particular series, we started because of COVID. And COVID being a very invisible, small thing, it has become World War III, having destroyed the world economy from all angles, even though it has very little, uh, you know, in terms of its, uh, you know, number of um, affected cases, number of deaths. They are all, in India, it is hardly 0.8% is affected. And in that 0.8, 98% of the record, and still it has brought everything down. Same in UAE also, even though the numbers look big. But, but in terms, terms of 10 million, you know, whatever number has happened is there. But we have to take due precaution, we have to take due, uh, give, give uh, the devil is due, give the due respect which Corona deserves, so that it doesn't uh, harm us more. Now, now why India? India is one of the mega cities, mega centers. Where but you think your PPP is not moving, I think, uh, Are you running in flights? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't want to stop, but you started. Yeah. But, but I'll start, start, I'll, I'll go, go from wherever I left off. Right, right. You're gonna be... Just slide. Uh, no, no, I want to just finish in a few minutes. minutes. I want to give maximum time, time to other speakers. Okay. 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 I think you can speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I can keep talking more. So, so, so this, that, that being the case, case, you know, uh, coming, coming cold to our point, you know, uh, Middle East is one of the core places where many things are happening, many Indians are contributing, and it has got financially, it has got technically becoming big. Another the beautiful news is, you know, Middle East is also going to be a center of excellence in space, which is something very, very nice to hear. Otherwise, you know, it will only the so-called bigger countries, including India, have a space. So like that, many things, you know, they have converted, you know, a desert area into one of the most prosperous centers in the world. And there are, that's where I come to our Zulfikar, my soft corner for a young man like him, is that, you know, people like him have brought India's goodwill abroad, and they have brought their own goodwill into the place concerned. So, so I would first introduce uh, uh, Zulfikar. Zulfikar is an enterprising, uh, uh, you know, individual. Even though he had a huge family business, still he went abroad, got a good name for himself, studied in USA, and he has traveled every part of the world. And and uh, finally, he has made himself uh, more into this Dubai based enterprises. So I would like him to talk a little more about himself. And also, I would like him to introduce the other uh, guest speakers who are there uh, without taking much time. Uh, Mr. Zulfikar, can you please start? 
Oh, sorry. Good afternoon, everyone in uh, India watching us live here. So I think it's going to be recorded, I guess. So thank you for uh, watching us. And uh, whatever time of the day, our heart is beating for you for that time of the day. Um, I am very excited, happy, and uh, honored to be on this particular forum, which is under the chairmanship of uh, Dr. P. Sekhar, who is a uh, a jewel of India, I would say. His contribution towards uh, the development of uh, sustainability and smart cities in India has been immense. Today, youngsters like us look up to Dr. Sekhar's uh, vision on uh, sustainability and uh, where, uh, you know, we leave a better world for our future and our future generation. And I am a big fan of uh, his writing. And I'm sure not just me, but even uh, the Prime Minister of India is a big fan of Dr. Sekhar. So congratulations, Dr. Sekhar, for illustrious career and uh, the great work that you do with so much of a zeal and enthusiasm. I also want to thank uh, Akram Haq here, who is a uh, part of uh, Policy Times. Akram, uh, yeah, I see you here. Thank you for this wonderful platform that you have uh, provided, not just to us, but all of uh, the people and professionals across the world who are working towards nation building and contributing for a better world. I like to take this opportunity to introduce my colleagues here uh, from Royal Office in uh, Abu Dhabi of uh, His Highness Sheikh uh, Ahmed bin Nasser bin Zayed Al Nahyan, who is a grandson of the uh, founder of UAE. Um, we call him with love uh, Baba Zayed, but his full name is His Highness Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan. He was the founder of UAE, and when he saw that there was a huge oil well and oil wealth that was discovered in UAE. He did not just shut himself, but he opened himself and his economy even bigger. He added more friends. He created a country called UAE today. And uh, he emphasized on giving and making your table bigger and better. And that feeling of warmth and love is carried across UAE today in all the Emirates, be it Dubai, be it uh, Sharjah, be it Rasul Khaima. <clears throat> all Emirates and all its citizens follow the, the, the footsteps of uh, the glorious uh, father of the nation, Sheikh Zayed. And uh, I'm a big fan of him as well. I have read his book several times. And all of us at the Royal Office, we follow his principles to the core. And the principle being, always do your best, uh, keep friendly relationship, and uh, giving is the best feeling. And that's what we keep doing. Uh, with this, I would like to introduce my colleague here from the Royal Office, uh, Mr. Badr al-Hindi, who is uh, uh, an important uh, shareholder and a director of that group. Under his vision, our company is also prospering very much. And uh, he is in charge of overall uh, um, operations. He's in charge of overall uh, royal uh, relationship and protocol management. He's also in charge of all the political initiatives at our office. And um, he is uh, a guide for us in terms of uh, how to navigate the whole nine yard of the government system in the UAE, having served the government for many, many years and still serving with pride at the highest level in the government and in the Sovereign Wealth Fund of the UAE today. So Mr. Badr brings in all their expertise. On the other hand, I've got uh, Colonel N.P. Singh retired, who has served Indian Army with um, so much of his experience and uh, so much of his uh, knowledge in terms of uh, the charisma that he carries, the, the ideas and uh, the technological development that he helped Indian Army. Um, you know, normally the, the communications and the signals are a certain aspect of uh, Army which a lot of people do not know about. But that's the backbone of every Army without a strong communication, without a strong signaling systems. And talking about 40, 30, 40 years back, imagine how important and critical establishing communication line between your different armies and different battalions was important. And Colonel Singh coming from a background of the most prestigious Institute of Technology, IIT Mumbai. Well, in those days, IIT Bombay. Um, Colonel N.P. Singh brings in uh, acute knowledge of uh, computer science and uh, development of software technologies. And he is basically the MI guy for us. He's a military intelligence guy for us. And you don't go on his smile, he is, uh, a man with a lot of, uh, Thank you very much. <laughs> lot of hard work and a lot of uh, good work that he has done for the army. And we have, have, we have him in our team because he has immense respect in uh, Indian business world and uh, social world. 
and Colonel Singh has uh, been true to his name. He's been a Sardar who's uh, led the country from the front and people respect him for all his good work. And we too at uh, Direction Investment Holding under the ages of His Highness Sheikh really value the contribution of uh, India in particular. But relationship with India is not just uh, one decade or two decades. It's the oldest relationship India has in uh, the Arab world. And between India and the Europe, the meeting point was always the Middle East. And in the Middle East, in particular, Dubai and Abu Dhabi were the meeting grounds for, uh, for the people from all over the world, across the world, in that part of the world. So what I realized is that uh, when I first went to the UAE, I realized that knowing Arabic and perhaps English was the most important skill set. But then I realized knowing Hindi and uh, Malayalam was the most important skill set. <laughs> on a lighter note. <laughs> On a lighter note, but on a serious note, um, UAE loves India and India loves UAE. Yeah. Every Indian, when he gets his passport in his hand, the first thing he wants to do is go to Dubai. You know? Exactly. And, uh, exactly. and uh, the love for UAE is not just because it's a beautiful city with great buildings and uh, fancy lifestyle, but it's, it's, it's the essence of UAE. UAE has incorporated India, the best of India. So as an Indian, um, when we go to Dubai, we feel more attached to that country and that place because of uh, it's just the way they've set it up in a way, you know. And when I first entered UAE, I, I felt something was there for me. And, and unfortunately, I have studied all of my life in Europe and in America. And the only way to reach out or get knowledge was the news channels in Europe and America. And I always felt that UAE and Middle East was not a very good place, which is very sad that the global media sees the Middle East in such a wrong way. And I want to really bring this point out today simply because there are a lot of people in the Western world and even in India, sometimes I come across people, they're like, oh, we are planning to go to Dubai. Is it safe? Uh, should I wear in certain ways? Am I, I'm a lady, should I dress up in certain ways? I'm like, no, you don't have to. Because when I first went to the UAE, I was shocked as well that this is not what it is. This is a very free culture. And it gives you all the freedom, the way you want to be, who you want to be and what you want to do, like for working for many, many years. And there came a point between me and His Highness once we were sitting together and he's like, uh, oh, you're fasting too? I'm like, yeah, I'm fasting. And he goes like, oh yeah, 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 you're a Muslim too. So that's religion is a by the way thing. It's not at all a consideration when two people meet in the UAE. You like me, I like you, there is a business between us. There is a business between us, you know? And across UAE, you will see different cultures, different religion have prospered. You know, nobody even, dare to ask you what's your religion or what's your background, what's your culture. I remember uh, many, many years ago, this is a story I heard from uh, my colleagues in office that uh, a delegation of uh, uh, Sikh community, Sadar, they came to the king in Abu Dhabi and they're like, you want to build a, a Gurdwara? And they said, why haven't you built it? Why haven't you come to me? And they looked at each other's face and they were like, yeah, we should have come long back. He said, you're not going to build just a Gurdwara, but you're going to build one of the largest Gurdwara in the world. And today, the one in Jebel Ali, the Gurudwar is one of the largest Gurudwaras in the world today, serving, I think, almost 5,000 lang langars, what you call the meals a day. Equally, we have uh, streets which gets uh, locked completely for uh, Ganesh Visarjan in Dubai, you know, an important Hindu festival. So everybody has a freedom to do what they want to do, the, the way they want to live. And I think that is the basic essence of any country's development. And that's what UAE, first of all, provides you, you know, because your culture, your social interaction, your belief, your religion is most critical and most important to you. If you get a freedom to practice your faith, I think that country is the best country for me. You know, Then it doesn't matter if it is a monarchy or if it's a democracy, it doesn't matter to me in person. What matters to me is that I have a full freedom to do what I want to do in life. And that's what UAE is built upon. It's about respect and love for each other. So you go to UAE, you're not judged on the basis of the bottom line or the monies that your company has made but on the basis of the happiness index of your employees. So we have something known as Ministry of Happiness. I don't know how many countries actually have that. You know, so Ministry of Happiness job is to ensure that people from around the world, not just its citizen, but people from around the world in UAE are happy and prosperous. You know, there is a survey that goes in which judges and which finds out the happiness index of a company. And that's valuable for us in UAE. Happiness is most important. Money comes and goes, but happiness and uh, love for each other is most important. Having said that, yes, we contribute a lot to India back in terms of revenues, in terms of foreign exchange. 
Uh, we are one of the biggest investors in India's growth story today. A lot of people think in UAE's biggest export is its oil, but I disagree with that. Our biggest export is our investments and the monies. And uh, most of that money is today going into the development of India, both in private as well as public sector. Even with Prime Minister Modi, when he first visited UAE, there was a lot of speculation how it's going to be with uh, Mr. Modi having a certain agenda and certain mindset with the UAE with a completely different set of religion and beliefs. <clears throat> but we proved all of them, all speculations wrong because we connect with India. It doesn't matter who's the prime minister or today or tomorrow. The connect with India is so strong that no matter who's the political head of the country, the relationship always thrives. And that is evident from the fact that the trade between India and UAE has only increased since Prime Minister Modi took over the chair. And of course, in honor of India and its uh, great uh, contribution towards the development of UAE, Prime Minister Modi was honored the highest civilian honor, the, uh, the Order of Zayed. Again, named after our founding father, Sheikh Zayed, whose uh, grandson is our chairman as well. <clears throat> so having said that, <clears throat> I believe there was never a better time for companies to explore opportunities and business in uh, UAE. I understand the domestic situations in India are going to be a little tough for the next one year. Of course, nobody has seen, uh, nobody expected these uh, tough, challenging time in the world which we are facing and coupled with uh, domestic challenges. And we are a growing country. I will not say we are a developing country because we are the oldest country in the world and the word developing, I really don't like. I also don't like the word third world for India. They should be not reserved for India especially. India is developed in a very different way. India is developed for what it's meant to be. It is developed in a way it suits its people. It's a country not found on capitalism, not found on socialism but found on welfare economics, economy which works for everyone. And that's what world can learn from India. Like a guy, a person, a family, even with an earnings of mere 20,000 rupees, which is just uh, under $500 can live happily. You know, So that is something the world needs to learn. Otherwise you can keep charging everything. You can keep taxing everything in the world you can. But this is the country where you know, only 5% or 6% of the population pays tax. And yet it is one of the fastest growing economy in the world. So we have a lot to learn from India as a culture, as a place, it's wisdom, it's uh, happy, being happy and smiling even in adversities is what uh, the biggest lesson for people across the world. Now, I believe that uh, Indian companies and Indian entrepreneurs should make use of this wonderful opportunity that UAE presents itself. I will not go too much into, um, I'm not here to market UAE as such, but just to highlight a few important points, um, it's a country which has got uh, uh, wonderful uh, infrastructure. It's a first world infrastructure with third world cost in terms of manufacturing or production. Now, we allow you to bring in your labors from anywhere in the world, which is one of the biggest reasons that you can keep your cost under control. We give you the world-class facilities. We have the well-developed ports, which becomes a meeting point for East and the West. Uh, countries, almost 202 nationalities live in UAE. And that is the biggest plus point because it creates that kind of marketplace. There is nobody in this world or no country in the world which has any bad feelings towards UAE. UAE has been friend and has relationship uh, which is cordially built over the period of time. And that is the biggest advantage. But our number one advantage is our currency which is pegged to the US dollar. There is a fixed value between US dollar and dirham which allows you to trade with complete peace of mind and transparent taxation system. Because today with the volatility in the world, you will appreciate the, the hedging cost, the hedging risk has become so big. The hedging cost in some cases uh, I've seen has gone up to seven to 8% as well. So it makes more sense to be in a country which charges you a fixed 5% VAT compared to a country, which is again a tax haven, which uh, gives you the freedom not to pay any taxes, but the hedging risk will automatically keep your business so volatile that you'll never be at peace in your mind. And being a country which has a 5% VAT, we automatically do not become a tax haven. As a result, institutions from Europe and across the world can participate in companies and businesses in UAE. That means you can now attract much bigger institutional capital versus just a moms and pops and family offices. So that is biggest advantage that UAE brings on the table, regardless of the fact that we are the largest investor of the world. Most importantly, we are the biggest gateway to Africa, which is the most promising developing continent at the moment. 
the population is increasing, the demand generators, the baby boomers. Um, there is so much of uh, increase in um, in uh, middle class in in Africa. The tribal behavior is changing and moving towards more urban. Um, the data shows that Africa is poised to develop almost double in next uh, 10 years or so. So here's an opportunity where an Indian company or Indian manufacturer can uh, explore opportunity in Middle East through a base out of Abu Dhabi and UAE and export their products and their merchandises which peace of mind from UAE to Africa to rest of the Asia and South Asia. And you don't have to worry about any kind of uh, risks because this is the most safe country. Ease of doing business, we are one of the top 10 or 15 countries in the world. And with uh, the blessings of uh, the royal family, we are able to create a much bigger marketplace and a much bigger platform for companies because um, we, we have that respect and that uh, relationship which automatically you benefit when you enter for the first time in UAE. So you don't have to spend another 10, 20 years just building a relationship in that market. We are here to provide you that relationship. We will back you. Of course, we'll have our own uh, ways of setting the relationship with you, right? But once we have it, we will be your biggest supporter. We'll be your biggest uh, partner and uh, stakeholder who will work along with you side by side and help you to gain businesses and uh, help you prosper and help India back, bring back valuable foreign exchange. With this, I will let uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Badr to speak and share his vision. By the way, I will just tell you something. His name has Al-Hindi in it. It's a historical, <laughs> which we will talk about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this was a tribe which was actually uh, uh, responsible for cordial relationship with Hindi, Hind, which is current day India. Gentlemen. He has relationship exactly. with 10 years or 20 years, but past 2000 years, they are the ones who negotiate <laughs> with Indians. <laughs> Mr. Badr, please go ahead. So nice. So, Dr. Badr. Th thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. thank you, Mr. Akram, for your time. Uh, really, uh, it's a pleasure to me to meet with everyone today in this Zoom call. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Dulfagar, for all your introduction about UAE, um, about the relation between uh, UAE and India, which is uh, really it's uh, centuries of uh, relation, which our people used to come to India before, like even even my grandfather, when, when, he, when he tell us about the stories when he was young, he, they used to go to India, which is like a heaven for them to buy the goods and uh, to do the, let's say, trading between India and UAE. And the Indians support, uh, you know, the region big time uh, because all most of the goods and most of the pro, you know protections come from India to the to the region, which is keep the you know the relation uh, about the governments also. After that, when we come in union and we come you know independent country, immediately Sheikh Zayed he didn't stop you know visiting India. He have a good relation with the Gandhi family. He have. Uh, you know, and after that, uh, Sheikh Mohammed, uh, with the visit of uh, most of the prime ministers of India, they visit UAE, and also our uh, our leaders all the time they are visiting. UAE. And to be honest with you, most of them they like, especially in finance, they like Indians to be financial controller for their offices. Either we have our in our office also financial controller. Okay, uh, they are most of them. They are from India, Dubai. It's like I will tell you. To be honest with everyone, Dubai. It's like you know. It's like an Indian city in UAE, <laughs> <laughs> and most of the locals, most of the locals in Dubai, they speak Hindi. Most of the locals, they speak Hindi. Wonderful. Yeah, and. Uh, we have a vision now in Abu Dhabi. We are, you know, we have a big plan for uh, for the development of the aerospace, mm -hmm. for uh, the artificial intelligence. That's why Sheikh Mohammed, the Crown Prince, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, uh, he opened the first uh, uh, artificial intelligence university in Abu Dhabi, and they are attracting. I think I'm not sure about the number. There is a students from 65 countries 
for the first, you know, for the first and second second uh, terms, uh, we have Mazdar uh, as uh, as you know a tool for renewable uh, energy. We have a nuclear weapon, you know, for uh, c- civil civil uh, business and electricity. We 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 done a lot of things that you know we try to follow the big countries. Either we are small countries like Dr. Shakir says, we are exactly we are almost 10, 10 million population, but sometimes we try to to show the world that we are here. We are not behind. We are here. We, you know, we are following everyone. Yes, we are trying to get the best all the time to our country. Uh, but uh, there is a lot of... I think unfortunately he got disconnected. He got disconnected. Because he was in his car. We'll wait. For, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, Colonel yeah. Singh, you can... We'll ask Colonel Singh to see a few minutes. Yeah, I would like uh, yeah. Colonel Singh to share his uh, quick view about uh, his association with uh, the Royal Office. And also, he's on the ground mostly in India, interacting with Indian SMEs and Indian companies. Uh, Colonel Singh, please share your experience and the enthusiasm that you see within the fraternity in the business world in India. Kindly share your thoughts on that. Thank you very much, Mr. Um, Zulfikar. Uh, I think, um, uh, thank you, Dr. Shekhar, and thank you, uh, Mr. Akram, to be on the uh, panel with you all, with the distinguished guest from UAE. I think it was an honor, quite an honor for me that when I was um, appointed as a senior strategic advisor international mm-hmm. by the Royal Offices, and that was a unique honor for an Indian uh, to uh, be chosen for this task, not only in India, but worldwide. Uh, uh, Perhaps because of my connectivity, which Royal Offices has recognized, thanks immensely to Mr. Zulfika uh, uh, for this honor which you bestowed on me. And uh, uh, I try to live in up to the expectation of a Royal Office. And uh, I think this was something uh, very unique Having understood UAE, Dubai, where I, we have, I had a vis, um, visits a number of times and visited internationally also to a number of countries. The facilitation, the atmosphere, the religious tolerance, the, the, the type of accommodation of the talents and its recognition in Abu Dhabi and Dubai and UAE is immense. And as you are well aware, the recently the policy have been formulated on um, regarding the citizenship also. And mm. very ab- aptly it says, uh, recognize, recognizing the talents. So that, and um, uh, Mr. Zulfikar brought out very aptly that worldwide, not even in, um, any country is not there, which is not having its base in Abu Dhabi. Mm. And... Abu Dhabi, out of all the Emirates, is the center where, where it has its own credential in terms of uh, debt-free country and a uh, uh, lot of accolades it has. And the vision and the way the, uh, 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 the, the ruling family and the uh, entire bureaucracy has embraced people to come in, set up their businesses. And this becomes a center point, a center hub, where you're very close to Europe, you're close to African countries, the Middle East, and GCC, because entire access over um, uh, royal offices has wonderful diplomatic relations in the worldwide to number of countries, entire GCC, entire Middle East. And that gives a wonderful platform when the people set up their um, bases um, uh, in, Ab- in Abu Dhabi or Dubai uh, to reach various countries. So I think... Uh, um, uh, it is a wonderful platform where we are discussing this important um, uh, uh, issue or, or rather familiarizing ourselves between India and UAE. And Dr. Sekar, we are grateful to you that you gave this platform where we can b- bring to the attention of the people what is UAE 
why Abu Dhabi, why Dubai, and what basic advantages we have. And uh, um, Mr. Zulfika brought out so beautifully well in this exact series, and thereafter, um, uh, Mr. Badr brought out so beautifully well that the relationship which UAE had long time back, 2000 year back, and it, it dated back, and the royal family, uh, uh, their integration with the uh, Indian sub subcontinent. So I personally feel it speaks very high. And uh, uh, to that extent, I think the forum that we have today is very, very enlightening and very, very informative. Yeah. Now, only now to take it to the next level, uh, at least till Dr. Bezat comes, uh, is that, you know, there is a lot of goodwill, there is capabilities, and there is a huge, even if you use the word Dubai and Middle East as a channelizing plus stability uh, point, they become uh, a good catalytic as well as a stabilizing factor. Now, uh, even I am taking initiative for even something like Indo-European $1 trillion economic uh, possibilities. Now, Middle East, Dubai, Abu Dhabi could be a real center of activity. Akram and we are talking of huge educational uh, expansion. You know, just two weeks back, an, an educational conference was held in which people from 11 countries, almost 80 speakers, four ministers, and 2,600 participants of a key nature had participated. And that also is being expanded. Now, Middle East would have a huge way in which they can contribute and they can also benefit. Today, once, you know, once an youngster is uh, uh, attuned to whatever we are all doing, then we are capturing the future. Otherwise, we are only buying something here and there. So this could be a very, very good way in which we can promote the relation between the two. Second is even cultural. Culturally, there are so many things which are good between us. Third is entertainment. Fourth is sports. And the, the story is endless. Skill development. Skill development both can do wonders. Okay. And in all these things, you know, in a way, Akram so policy can, can come in picture. You are there at, at uh, you, you gave such a wonderful speech, Zulfikar. I'm also hearing you first time. I'm very happy the way you projected in both ways without, you know, making anything uh, the same. Especially when you said from an Indian point of view that people calling India the developing country and people calling this is not correct. At the same time, without leaving your today's place where you want to promote as something which is a golden goose, which people should come, be there, see the way it is, the way you describe some of the internal things were mind blowing, which much of it I know, but many people do not know. Because I know that Middle East, especially Dubai and all, are not as, like you said, as bad as made out to be. Because there are people to, you know, even if you say that you got a headache, they just think you're a cancer patient and <laughs> <laughs> throw you out. <laughs> so, which is not true. Uh, it's all good places where Indians have prospered. This is the country in which majority is Indian in terms of numbers. And, and they are happy and they are contributing. They are contributing not only for, as you know, you know, the uh, <coughs> person of Indian origin, PIO, or overseas Indian, they contribute a $1 trillion economy in the world. <laughs> and I'm sure, you know, much of it you are also personally holding. <laughs> <laughs> so, people are doing good and people are relevantly and in a very positive way doing things which should be highlighted. And we should, this should not be one of uh, an experience, this whatever we are doing today. It should be a channel and in each channel with an objective. It should also not be that it becomes a tea party where we are all talking together and, you know, tapping each other's back. It should be with an objective. So, this yeah, also I would like to see how we can do. Can you, can you can you come to the second level and then you know take it to the next? Uh... I would like to add a point here that uh, it's it's perfect time for Indian companies to explore uh, UAE not just for uh, you know uh, business opportunity in UAE only but for across the world because Very. you know to raise financing and investment for your businesses is much more easier in UAE you know having the base in the UAE compared to having in India. I mean. Yes, I'm not saying the FDI is not coming into India, but the pace has been relatively slower, especially in the mid-market and the SME sector. Most of the boom is uh, seen in the top 20 stocks in the country today. But there is a middle and SME companies, you know, mid-level companies, which are the most cash-strapped right now, cash-starved, 
and that's where the real development is required at the moment and real financing and investment is required and that's what we are in a position to support indian companies if uh, they were to set up their uh, presence out of ua because to an international audience attracting capital becomes much more easier you know that thereby becomes a gateway for you to attract more capital not only to do business in india you are a business person you want to do business it doesn't matter where you earn money from be it trade in africa be it trade in uh, europe be it trade in uh, any part of the world so as an entrepreneur we have to be pragmatic we have to look at boundaries beyond that's the only way we're going to be able to bring more and more foreign exchange in the country today you learn from the american brands even the mcdonalds you know in the rural parts of india is uh, say, adopting to the local culture you go to punjab they'll serve you something very similar to aloo tikki chaat uh, burger when you go to down south you'll have a very sambal flavored uh, burgers so they have adopted they have customized themselves why can't uh, haldiram of the world or shrinath ji's of country can also do the same so this is what i'm talking about going global and yet taking our local essence along with us and that is what uh, will make us a trillion dollar economy going further you know larger economy of the world today so i think it's time for indian companies to look for opportunities abroad and it's a perfect timing right now the world needs india the world has already understood india's power in terms of its uh, pharmaceutical industry its alternative medicine industry again today i was listening to prime minister modi on one of the health initiatives he talked about india's uh, uh, growth uh, and its india's acceptance as a leader of uh, alternative medicine and uh, today we are 80% manufacturer of the global uh, vaccines and uh, our doctors are the best our pr professionals are the best so i think it's a time for india to establish its uh, companies and businesses abroad as well and not just go as a professional and here we are to propel and support that growth story over to you good akram i think you should also yeah. some thank you thank you so much uh, zurbika sir it was really amazing to hear hear your perspectives and points uh very frankly and honestly among all the intellectual muslims i have heard from the indian subcontinent i have not come across with the kind of ideas the kind of beyond or out of the box thinking that you have shared was really you know inspiring for for a young entrepreneur like me and taking the inspiration from your views i think we have also been planning to go global coming from india we thought uh, you know now is time we are we are already global because being indian the way we have uh, the positivity and, and you know positive perceptions in our neighboring countries in different part of the world is amazing and since beginning we thought that you know we are a small organization we cannot do everything together so we want to contribute positively slowly gradually consistently how do we do uh, we realize that education is the foundation for development any nation which wants to be world class unless the education system of the country is world class it cannot be and it cannot achieve it so we started connecting with the educators of india and slowly now 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 we have identified three areas of contribution one is cross border education connect because in the digital post covid digital era all everything is global so we can easily connect india with the different part of the world so we want to go go global my means cross border education connect the second is school university connect and third is education industry connect reason being industry is the end destination for all the education aspirants so this is how we start contributing coming from india now we are connected with bangladesh uh, nepal bhutan uh, middle east africa and we have been doing wonderful in the journey we realized so education is not the end of the journey after education we want to contribute in the healthcare sector because health after education health is the most important aspect we need to address and we need affordable sustainable healthcare in all nations especially countries like us the third is sustainable development sustainable development is very important climate change fourth is definitely uh, is the infrastructure and many other areas startup ecosystem and also we want to address the global indians like the contribution of the indians abroad and how they can contribute back to india we also want to have our offices abroad reason be you know to have the like ua is definitely one of the best destinations of the world uh, to be uh, ha to have our presence i would be very happy to have your support and you know knowledge and experience in terms of how do we go, go global being an indian how do you really see the global market as our potential market for future initiatives and ventures that is one dubai expo 2020 we are planning fiki is the Uh, indian nodal head 
and we have so they have a one week education program so we have approached fiki and i, I come from fiki uh, and and long tenure at fiki and cii heading a lot of international delegations in different countries and then uh, also doing many of the developmental works and so we i personally have been part of four international events in india where our prime minister was chief guest and many of the head of states the make in india launch was also done by our team when i was at cii so this has been after that uh, i was thinking in dubai expo 2020 probably policy times will also be part of the education week uh, that we are planning in dubai we'll be extremely happy to have your advice and support on this a little yeah. highlight on expo 2020 and and some of the things that actually i just mentioned only uh, on behalf of both i am sure zulfikar will go out of the way to help you and you should also go out of the way to see that whatever he says is propagated around you know because he has got something good to say of course what one good thing which uh, akram does is he takes the pick up of all this thing and then spreads across he is uh, in, in touch with almost 1000 education institutions about 100 universities and all in india and in no 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 not in india there are i think uh, 30% of them are in nepal bangladesh and all so it is no more <laughs> two year, two years back to india last one year there has been a huge growth last year was in india now nepal bangladesh Bhutan. yeah now now it is four more countries are very closely in touch so that we can we we should uh, try to because the proof of putting is in eating other is an academic talk academic talk there are better people to talk than four of us you know when we are talking we are talking something which can be done you know in first is a short term goal and long term goal long term goal is more of a vision short term goal is more of a mission so something which is mission oriented we should take and then see to it that you know whatever we are saying uh, comes into a much bigger reality platform and here nobody should feel as doing favor to nobody both should feel as if i need you you need me i don't think india should feel that oh i am something great and so i am doing a favor neither is middle east feeling that way middle east is always a pleasant place to uh, work with and it has never been <clears throat> anything with uh, you know like many people have a joke oh that flow comes 10 feet above the ground you know which means you know you cannot work with them and here i think both of us are firmly on the ground both the you know, people are very uh, good well meaning and there's enough credential set you know anybody having a thing they know there are successful indians it is not a pep talk with zulfikar is going there are successful people there are people who have become made a huge uh, dent and they have and there are few who have failed also yes not that you know we are no failures and uh, the failed also have took the blame on themselves they are not blame the system they are not said that because in some countries what happened they have uh, i will not name the country some other country they know they were just warned they were told to go <laughs> that's all <laughs> leave everything and go uh, this has never happened in middle east at least at least at least the ua portion of the middle east and the the, the liberate portion of uh, the same so we should see how well we can go and uh, i think you know uh, he may not be able to join dr badar seen touch uh, dr badar was having a little bit of an issue with uh, connectivity okay okay because he entered actually in abu dhabi today also there is an international defense exposition edx okay okay it's okay. happening so most of my team members are at idex because uh, we are also promoting uh, development of defense industry in the uae okay we have participation from almost 185 countries today which is very big plus uh, we also focusing a lot on cyber security artificial intelligence and development of uh, in all this thing we can do wonders zulfikar yeah. in all this thing we can do as much as you are i, I want to tell world what i want to tell people you know i meet a lot of people we can do and what we can do is since brother was half way through maybe one more session we'll have at a mutually convenient uh, day and time oh. and because he's not India, that's what is my delicate we can address more and more questions and answers yeah, yeah. Very, very true and 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 and, and if the tempo was picking up and suddenly the net went away so uh, with that i will ask you for your final round of talks and then uh, um, uh, colonel singh and then akram can close you can give your final you uh, finally what i can say is that uae is open for business we are open to support you we are here to support indian companies and companies from all over the world to come into business with us will hand hold you we will guide you will be your partner in uh, real essence and uh, wherever need be will support you to get the rightest place for your company we will not shy away from not just helping you in uae but helping you across the other parts of the middle east africa and wherever in the world we have our diplomatic reach so we as a royal family office we are not just a business uh, family 
but we're also a diplomatic family as a royal office. And we have much more higher and much um, better bird's eye view on what's happening worldwide. But <clears throat> so be it economic norms, be it uh, legal environment, be it uh, environmental norms, sustainability, we focus on all these aspects. So whenever we start a particular business, we ask ourselves these kind of questions. Are we gonna make the world a better place? Are we gonna be able to create more jobs? Are we uh, in a position to help more and more uh, stakeholders to achieve better, bigger success? <clears throat> so our question is never like, uh, how much money are we gonna make? The question is how many lives are we gonna transform? So with that vision, UAE goes ahead in all walks of life. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who are ignorant about the fact that um, the, the innovation of uh, solar technology and the battery technology and hydrogen technology is actually going to kill the UA economy. But what they don't understand is that all these technologies that you see today in the world are all actually initiatives of the uh, Arab money, the, the oil money, you know, which propelled, which this money was utilized for all these researches, which was very expensive to start with. And so instead of blaming the oil economy, the world should appreciate what the oil economy did by investing at the right time into renewable sources of energy. And in fact, UAE is the country which has taken a promise to the world that by 2030, they're going to reduce their carbon footprint by almost 70%, which is a very big statement by oil producing country. So it's a visionary country. It's a country which is thinking of a thousand years ahead. It wants its people to prosper. It wants everyone in their country to prosper, no matter who you are, where you're from, and what you do. And even today when the vaccination is going on in the country, um, we are number second in the world in terms of vaccination, but I think we're number one in the spirit of vaccination because this country is vaccinating everyone that is in their land, you know, not differentiating between citizen or non-citizen, you know, or religion or whatever, like we see in another country, you know, but it's not uh, happening that way. Everybody is getting an equal opportunity to get a right to healthcare, you know. So I think that's a very big plus point for UAE today. And inshallah, by next month or two, we'll have 100% vaccination completed, thereby giving a very clean and a good and a healthy atmosphere to its people and its residents. And new people who are coming in, they'll be vaccinated absolutely for free and given access to healthcare and good life. So I think all ingredients that mix together leads to an opportunity for a stronger India-UAE relationship. And we always have a commitment. You come from anywhere in the world to UAE and from UAE will take you to the rest of the world. So with that commitment, we are here to support you 100%. And please feel free to reach out to us and Colonel Singh, our office is always available. We are, as you've seen me, I always wear a smile on my face, no matter what. Um, but we are always here to support you Akram, even in your reach out uh, diplomatically or through chambers, we are happy to support you. And we've created an offering where it's not just, um, you know, uh, a half-hearted approach. Oh, yeah, just because we're a royal family office, we are supposed to help and meet with people. No, it's a comprehensive strategy, which I'm sure Colonel Singh will help you with all the documentation. The way we have created our vision document, the way we have created our prospectus, everything talks about the meticulous planning that's gone into helping people and the businesses to flourish in the UAE and rest of the world. So we feel, feel, please feel free to reach out to us. And I'm always available. I love to talk. I love to talk about both the countries. One is a country of my birth. One is a country of my success. So both are very close to my heart. And sitting in the UAE, I always think of how much better ways to support my own country, India. And everyone in the royal family knows that, that this guy is all about his country. And that's the reason why I never pretend to wear any of the local dresses. First thing I tell people when they reach out to me is that I'm an Indian first. You know, that's the identity I wear always with my heart. And I will never give that up. So I've had always ample of opportunity to take this passport, that passport, take that diplomatic status, this one, but I never, because, you know, as the British always said, something they said right, that was that if you're a man not who love his religion and country, you're of no one else. So I always believe in loving these two things. And of course, respect everyone else in return. So with that, I will thank you for this lovely opportunity to us. And uh, Colonel Singh, you would like to add any yeah, parting I thoughts? Think, should I? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think it has been an honor to have you. And uh, thanks to Dr. Seker and uh, Akram, which uh, gave us this platform, which was so informative and the way, in a very wonderful manner, uh, Mr. Tulfika, the way you brought out the entire spirit, um, I think it is overwhelming. And um, 
uh, we were told very beautifully you brought out the, in at last that person who doesn't respect his religion or the country um, um, uh, same thing was said in our religion also while we were in the army they said a person who respect his beard and um, uh, as a soldier that means he is upkeeping his religion that means he will be very honest to the services uh, that was was old saying which was going which you brought out and it just remind, reminded me <laughs> of the, the sikh regiment where i visited uh, while we were on the border in uh, 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 militancy or otherwise and uh, that always used to keep our spirit very very high and uh, world across even the queen in um, england has a lot of respect for the sikh including her bodyguards mm -hmm. so uh, this statement of yours um, uh, i'm weighing only in from that perspective and and total acceptance of all the nationality in uae is a wonderful uh, factor and you brought out all the advantages i got nothing more to add from add from that perspective uh, so uh, thank you very much for this platform and uh, 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 that's all i want to say thank you just be, just closing the session before handing over to akram again for the final closing thank you uh, india and uae talk middle east have got a lot of things to gain a lot of things to work now india is becoming slowly a powerhouse of various things technology you name it we can give and and one can see it today most of the problems in india as i say sign of prosperity and there is a poverty also we cannot shy away from that because population is there and it's going to be growing when 20 million people are coming every year it is going to have a permanent thing there also of course some of my books i've written on how to take up the challenge and how to make it an attractive for india's growth so with that thing i would like to thank uh, zulfikar ji uh, singh and also dr badar in uh, in his absence because of this thing and i would like akram to say his final words before we say bye thank you thank you so much dr shikhar thank you so much zulfikar sir we are already charged up we are already motivated but after hearing your speech i got actually double motivated in a complete different dimension of our vision i think post this we will have a complete different outlook at looking at ua so this i have not read any much about ua but today after hearing your speeches last lessons of last one hour was more than reading 10 books about ua uh, to me experience of uh, 15 years my friend <laughs> exactly i don't read from any script i speak from uh, i have in your eyes experience a okay. lot of good points like the currency you said that the currency against us is one major point very major point. i realize your audience has not come to see any powerpoint presentation from me or any script they can find it on google themselves they are here here to learn from the person who actually been there done that so i thought i'll present that perspective today i hope i succeeded and akram thanks again dr. thanks again and dr singh thanks Thank again you so much for joining us we used to we wish to have you many times in the future sir uh, also with dr badir uh, to talk about more on uae and also india uae relations Thank you so much. And viewers, if you like the discussion, do subscribe to our Facebook and YouTube channel. And we will be back with our experts in our future programs. Thank you. Keep watching.